happens. Imagine that you have some E. coli cells, you cannot prevent it on your kitchen uh, table, and uh, you have it very clean. Then the E. coli cells are sort of dormant, but now, as you see that on the left side, when you spill milk, then the milk molecules, lactose molecules, make it into the cell, tell the cell there are some delicious lactose around, and the cell now genetically begins to program, uh, um, to program itself to make, uh, uh, to make uh, uh, proteins that import the lactose into the cell and uh, uh, catalytically uh, degrade it into components that the cell is doing. Let me show it to you again. So here you see again how, how it works. And you see then each of the LAC, uh, LAC Y, they, they are called uh, these this green uh, uh, little spheres, uh, proteins that are made by the, by the cells. And you see it's rather stochastic. It does, and the cells have actually personalities. Some of them do it very quickly. Some of them don't do it so quickly. And at the end, you have actually two who are really out doing all the other ones in responding and eating the, 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 the milk uh, most quickly. You see also in pink the messenger RNA that is, that is the genetic uh, message that is controlling this whole process. And then most important now for you, as GPU programmers, you see on the left side, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the table with how effectively this calculation is done on the GPU, on an older model, on a newer model, and uh, I'm supposed to tell you that this calculation was actually done on the cluster, uh, on the Lincoln cluster at NCSA, uh, uh, where that was accelerated by the GPUs. Without the GPUs, this project wouldn't exist. With it, we have now a new field that permits us to simulate actually entire cells.